Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from EcatSec. As promised, here is my gaming comparison between the Nubia Red Magic 6 Pro and the Asus ROG Phone 5. For this video, I'm going to be testing out PUBG so we'll see what's the maximum graphics settings you can set, how hot the phone will get, and also I'll show you how the shoulder triggers work on these two phones. So let's get this comparison started guys! Alright, so if you can see here, I've got the Red Magic Dual Core Cooler and the Aero Active Cooler 5. So I'm going to be doing the initial test without the coolers and see how hot both phones will get and whether you actually need to install or use the coolers. And for the second run of the test, of course, I'll be attaching the coolers and I'll be comparing the temperatures that I'm getting on both phones. Alright, so I'll turn on Game Center on both phones. <laughs> Okay guys, so I've got the RG Phone 5 at the top and the Red Magic 6 Pro at the bottom. I tried to enable the 90 frames per second mode using the tutorials I saw on YouTube but unfortunately I couldn't get it to work on both phones. Once I'm able to get that 90 frames per second option enabled then I'll do another gaming test but for now we'll see what's the maximum frames that you can get on both phones. So a quick check on the settings, so for the graphics. In order to hit that stable 60 frames per second, you have to put it at HDR and set the frame rate to extreme. If I go to Ultra HD, your frames per second or your FPS will be limited to just 40. So I want to test out how well the phone handles 60 frames per second. So I'll dial it down to HDR and set it to extreme. So I've set that for the lobby and for combat. So for the rest of the settings, so I'll just put that FPS at the side. So I've got graphics set to HDR, frame rate to extreme, style is realistic, anti-aliasing on, shadows on, and I guess that's it. Now if you want to set the controls, just go to customize and then there's a shoulder trigger option there, you can turn it on. So you can move the shoulder button, so I'll set that to the left. For shoot or I can just put the left for the aim and R to shoot. Now there are other options here as well you can do uh, press to trigger the dual operation. So I'll test it out in game and see how it actually works. So I'll set L1 L2 to jump. I'll set R1 to shoot and R2 to aim. So let's see how these settings play out in game. And let's start a quick game guys. Thirty five point seven, we'll see how hot it gets during the game. I changed the shoulder trigger buttons, I can't really figure out how that L1, L2, and R1, R2 works, but we'll see. Frames per second are pretty stable at 60, so that's a good sign. Let me try another setting here, guys. I want to set the scope. That works well, so when you press it, it's going to go into mode. Starting to get pretty hot at the back guys, so let's do a quick temperature test again. 38.2 in the front and at the back. 37.5 and so far, no issues with the shoulder triggers. Some people have reported that once the phone gets hot then the shoulder triggers become unresponsive but in this case all good. Let's see if I can get to an area where there are more people to shoot at. Not much action so far. A few moments later.
39.5, getting up there. Alright guys, so that's my initial test. It's gotten a bit uncomfortable at the latter part of the test. I'll see how it goes with the dual core cooler later, but now let's do the ROG Phone 5 test. Okay, so it's actually left it in the menu, so let's see how hot it got while in that menu. 41.5, it's actually a lot warmer. Uh, let's see at the back how, how hot it is. 40.9. Okay, at the center area is where it's hottest at 40.5 and on the display side 41.3 so even though it wasn't in game and i just left it in the lobby it actually heated up that much so let's see how it goes in an actual game but let's set the settings as well so i can show you guys the shoulder triggers so that it's called air triggers on uh the rog phone 5 so you've got an option to do a dual partition so basically it depends on which part of the trigger you're pressing and you're going to be able to press that accordingly. But for now, I'll just keep it at the default tap. So tap to aim and tap to shoot. There isn't a setting similar to the Red Magic 6 Pro where pressing and then letting go is two separate actions. On the RG Phone 5, we don't have that option. So I'll just keep it at tap. So you've got, I'm not sure if you can see it properly, you've got the frames per second over there. So it's a stable 60 going down to 58 59 but let's see how it goes in an actual game In game, let's see the temperature. 44.1 guys.
I don't know guys, the shoulder triggers on the Red Magic 6 Pro is actually a bit more responsive. I find it more responsive than this one. A few moments later. So let's test out the Red Magic 6 Pro now with the dual core cooler. The Red Magic 6 Pro without the cooler actually maxed out at around 40.5 degrees Celsius. So I'm expecting temperatures will be a lot lower with the dual core cooler attached. So let me get a power bank real quick. Alright, cooler is attached guys. You can see it running with that LED light. Start of the match, 33.6 guys. Alright, so temperature-wise, it's not going too bad. You can't even feel the heat coming from the phone. Enemies ahead. So, let me plug in the charger and test out the bypass charging. Charging first. So the opening only charge the system, not the battery. Okay. So let's test out if the phone will heat up. Let's see if the temperature is actually increased a bit. Yep, it remained the same and the battery isn't charging, so let's just remove it for now. Game is done with the cooler and temperatures actually never even went higher than 34.4. Gaming with this Red Magic Dual Core Cooler is the way to go if you want to keep temperatures down and play for extended gaming sessions. So removing the cooler, let's see the final temperature on the phone. It's 34.6 and at the back. 33.3 so temperatures are well in control as long as you use the dual core cooler not even hitting anywhere close to 40 degrees but 40 degrees for a snapdragon 888 without the cooler is still pretty good so with and without the cooler the red magic 6 pro can definitely handle the heat coming from the snapdragon 888 now it's time to test the rog phone 5 with the air active cooler 5 so let me just attach it, okay, remove the rubber cover, make sure you don't lose it, it's pretty small, and then let's attach the cooler. So starting the phone, let's see the temperatures, 33.3. So let's see how hot the phone gets with the cooler. And one of the good things with using the Aero Active Cooler is that once attached, you can actually have two additional buttons at the back. So while you're gaming, you've got the shoulder buttons and additional trigger buttons here left and right let's customize and pull up the menu air triggers cooler buttons turn it on and you see okay, you can click left and right so let's assign this one to the jump and this one to the crouch that should save it guys and let's exit Cooler buttons in action So it eliminates the need to actually press anything on screen with these buttons So for the real-time info, you can actually see 
the battery percentage, the internal temperature of the phone, and the FPS. So right now, it's maxing out at 60 FPS and hovering between 57 to 60. Temperature so far, 37.8. So still pretty good. Hasn't hit 40 degrees yet. So that's a good sign. Final attempts 43.9 okay so let's remove the cooler guys and see the temperatures at the back of the phone okay temperature at the back 38.5 at the bottom 39.8 and on the screen 43.5 so temperatures have been better controlled with the use of the Air Active Cooler 5, the temperature difference wasn't as big as what you've got on the Red Magic Dual Core Cooler. So just to recap guys, without the cooler, the Red Magic 6 Pro stayed relatively a lot cooler than the ROG Phone 5. The Red Magic 6 Pro maxed out at around 40 degrees Celsius while the Rogue 5 or the Rogue Phone 5 maxed out at 45 degrees Celsius. And with the addition of the Red Magic Dual Core Cooler for the Red Magic 6 Pro, temperatures went down to as low as 35 degrees. While on the ROG Phone 5, the temperatures were still higher than 40, and, but it didn't get as hot as it did without the cooler. And playing with the phone, it didn't feel too hot from the backside. Only the display got a bit hot, so it wasn't as unpleasant as it was initially without the cooler. Now discussing the shoulder triggers, there's actually a lot more settings that you can set with the Rogue Phone 5. And if you add the Aeroactive Cooler to the mix, then you've got the two cooler buttons in addition. So that could actually give you an edge if you're going to play competitively. In terms of response times, I still feel that the Red Magic 6 Pro had the better shoulder trigger response or the latency was better. You can actually tell that when pressing the shoulder trigger buttons, the response was almost instantaneous. So it actually directly translates to more responsive feedback when using the shoulder triggers. It's not that bad on the ROG Phone 5, but since I was testing them both at the same time, I can actually tell the difference. But if you're going to test the ROG Phone 5 on its own, then the latency on the shoulder triggers is good enough. If you compare it directly with the Red Magic 6 Pro, the Red Magic 6 Pro will still come up on top with the response times for that shoulder trigger. So overall, temperatures didn't get as bad as what they did on my Antutu benchmark test. I guess real life games don't tax the phones as much as that Antutu benchmark did. The temperatures are nowhere near the 50 plus 
plus degrees Celsius that we saw on that benchmark test. So that's it for the gaming comparison test that I did for the Red Magic 6 Pro and the ROG Phone 5. Let me know how you find the phones in your games and let me know in the comment section down below. But until then, a sub would be massively appreciated. Please like and subscribe, hit that bell icon notification, and see you all in my next one.